Anxiety and depression. Oh man, oh man, oh my. Where do I even start with this game? Oh, um, there, I guess. So let's tell the story of a Canadian woman called Madeline with anxiety and depression, which came to Slus Mountain to climb the summit to challenge herself. Anxiety and depression. Wow, this game's amazing! Or is it? Other than most hoodie platformers, I mean the ones that have dozens of short levels like Donkey Kong Country or Mario, Celeste has a total of 9 levels. Just 9. Well, they're not called levels, they're called chapters, but that's the same thing. And yes, the number 9 isn't a lot compared to literally 300, but as you'd expect, they're quite long. I would say a lot of the levels are about 1 hour, some even more, some less though. Which means that you can't really play this game casually. Sorry if you wanted to play this game casually. I don't really call this a flaw, but it's a bummer for more casual gamers, I would say. In each chapter, there's at least one big thing that that chapter introduces. And in almost each chapter, there's a new piece of story. It's consistent storytelling, which isn't something that the 2D platformer genre necessarily has in big amounts. More about the story later, more about the controls now. There is free moves you can do, free moves as in moves you need to perform to beat the game. There are other moves, like you could duck, if you call that a move, but I'm not gonna talk about moves like that, I'm gonna talk about the free main moves you could do. You could jump, it doesn't work any different than other TV platformers, but hey, you could jump. But at least it feels good to perform, so props to this a lot. You could also climb in this game. This is a game about climbing, if there wasn't a move about climbing, it would be an unredeemable misstep. And here, the climbing is pretty good. Realistically, there's a set stamina for the amount of climbing you can do, but it doesn't punish you if you just stay there and do something else, but still holding the right trigger. But hey, you're, no, but like, you, don't, you didn't pause the game, neither did you press home. Why would you do that? It gives you freedom in where you want to go which is important, the third and most important move is the dash. And as the most important move, I gotta say thank god it's pretty good. I especially like it when you have to use it strategically. I'll give you a simple, simple, simple example. So first, yeah, you have to go right and then you go left and then you go up and then you go left and then you go up and then you go left and then you go up and then you go, up, you get, then you go left. Okay, then, okay, so I'll jump and then I'll use my dash and then I'll get that green crystal, which will give me another dash, which will bring me to the next platform. I could give more examples, but I don't feel like it. The dash is probably the reason why you would say, or more specifically, I would say, this game has amazing controls. But yeah, the game's controls are pretty good. If there is one little criticism I have about the controls is that it's a bit hard to get into. Maybe it's because I played Choco Freeze before this game, and their playing styles are way different, but it was really hard to get into. Which means that the beginning of the game wasn't as enjoyable as it could have been, but I said as enjoyable. As enjoyable. The beginning was still fun as hell. Actually, I'm gonna prove it. I'm gonna talk about the beginning of the game. More specifically, the first chapter after the tutorials. The level starts with basic platforming, which utilizes the dash. After, yeah sure, there's some platforming, but now, you use the climb. And you also see this red strawberry. You can take it, it won't bite. Look, you got it. And let me tell you, there is 175 of them in the whole entire game. But collecting them doesn't do a single thing. I didn't collect half of them, but sure I guess, I didn't lose anything. Well, they could've at least, at least, because if a bunch of people worked for this, like getting 175, Strawberries you could have at least offered some artwork at the very minimum. Oh, oh no, actually give something. You get an achievement that's called Impress Your Friends. Wow, that fixes everything. No, but seriously, the other collectibles do something. Why can't the strawberries at least do a single useful thing that will actually affect the game or give you some extra cool stuff? Why? Well, I said other collectibles. I guess I gotta talk about them. Other than the red collectibles, in terms of main collectibles, there is the Crystal Hearts, which comes in a variety of different colors, blue, red, yellow, and white. And, hey, 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 strawberries, they actually do something. They unlock actual gameplay. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. 
I'll give you an example of, of what they actually give because I didn't really give actual context. So in chapter 9, the game will be like, hey, 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 you have 15 hearts, and if you don't, it won't let you pass. But if you do, it will let you pass. And this is amazing. It's rewarding people that actually care about the game. But it does kind of make people go like, yo, come on, man, just let me play the game. The other main collectibles are the cassettes. These cassettes unlock, like, harder versions of the levels, which, yes, is how a hidden collectible should reward you. In general, Celeste does its hidden collectibles really well. Something more is that every heart and cassette is really hella good hidden. It's a great challenge at a point that I will even try to get. Trust me, that's an achievement. A game's hidden collectible has two things to achieve, being well hidden and giving you something that actually rewards you. And Celeste achieves both of them. Plus, I gotta tell you, some hidden collectibles are really, really well hidden. For one, you gotta use a Mario free reference to get. I guess that'll convince you that they're at least pretty hard to get. But you know what else is hard? The game. The reason why I gave points is because it's the good kind of hard. I will give you an explanation. So you know how in Mario Maker, when the level is just hard for the sake of being hard, that's not the last. But you know what's the satisfying feeling of beating a level in Meat Boy or beating a boxer in Punch Out? Now that's how the difficulty in Celeste is. Although it's hard as nails, it never fails you to make you satisfied. And you know what else is good about the difficulty? It's not the difficulty. It's in the game, of course. In the but more specifically the beginning of the game. You know what the game tells you? You know what it, the game tells you? You can notice. Not only does the game know that's hella hard, so it's, you know, self-aware, which is amazing, but the game encourages you, and I love it. Other than that message, there was things that encouraged me to continue to play this game regardless of its hard difficulty. The freak, the music is so freaking good! This is one of my favorite indie OST. Don't believe me? The first thing you could do in the game, apart from the title screen, is not moving. Maybe you don't count it, but it's looking at the art style. And if you at least don't love the art style, then the door is over there. The pixel art is so good that I'd say that if it was in an art museum, it wouldn't even stand out. That's how good it is. Now I'm heading to the spoilers. So skip this time to not get spoiled. Like I said, the protagonist, Madeline, wanting to challenge yourself is what the game is about. As you would guess, there's obstacles in her way. The hell? I know. You might know this character, Madeline. She is a part of Madeline. The mental illness part. Basically, the anxiety and depression part. She first appears in Chapter 2. And after that, she appears in basically almost every chapter, just there to like piss you off and to tell Madeline to kill herself. She's basically forcing Madeline to say, shut up. But she does this not because she's bored, but because she is actually scared of climbing on top of the mountain. Madeline kind of hates Ma battling, and battling always implies that she wants to help. The complete opposite. Well, about the hating Madeline part, I don't blame Madeline for that. Madeline caused a death-worthy boss. A good one, but a death-worthy one. Oh, and the bosses of this game are really hella good, but there's a problem. Why is there so few of them? Just why? But seriously, there's only like three bosses in the whole entire 10-hour playthrough of the game, which is quite disappointing, not because I hate the bosses, but because I love them. Okay, love is a, is a pretty strong word. I I found big fondness with the bosses of this game. Yeah. There's a boss I really want to talk about, and that's the first bat wooden fight. And I really, honestly, man, if you don't like this boss, then it's okay. Like, it's okay. 
I, I'll just hate you, but like, you get out of your way. So, if you haven't played this game, I was gonna give you context. So, battle and pisses, um, battle and off, or maybe it's the opposite, and then causes a fight. This is one of the best parts of this game for one reason alone. It tests you on what the chapter introduced. Example, the feather and trampoline mechanic. It's something that every boss includes in this game. Something else that every boss includes in this game is a reason for why they want to fight you. They're never like, my schedule says I'm free for the next two days. Um, you know, I, I, I want to fight the main character. No. But mostly, it's most times, yes, there is a reason, like I said. It's because of their emotions. It's not because their boss told them, yo, beat him up. No, 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 no. But there's something even more interesting about these bosses. So, the bosses aren't necessarily about combat, and most bosses especially in platformers, are just hit the boss a specific amount of time. For this game, I like the, yo, run away from this guy or hit that guy a bunch of times. Like the battle and fight. It's perfect for this game. The need of hitting a guy three times wouldn't work. But you know what would be annoying if these bosses were in, let's say, any platformer? I don't need to restart the game every time there is a game over. No game over! This is, among multiple other reasons, why I like anxiety. And it's also the reason why this game gets a 92.